Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com. Hurricane Beryl is causing significant damage as it rips through the Caribbean. What forecasters are predicting the storm will do next. And coming up, how remote city workers are pushing back over a mayor's order. Plus, South Texas heat poses a challenge for all, especially the unhoused. Hear what one advocate hopes the city will do. Okay, on the outside, still holding at 77 degrees here in Victoria. The index value approaching 80 degrees currently and be rising rapidly throughout the day. Keep prepared for another hot day today or triple digit heat index value. And Barrel is on its way here, not where it is now, not anything strong like that, but definitely feeling some impacts here. What will they be exactly? We'll find out in your forecast. Stay hot in Toronto. Highlights from the wild game coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Trey Mining. And today it's the third day of July 2024. Mm -hmm. The time is now 6.30 on our Wednesday morning. And we're keeping our eyes on the tropics. Trey. How is Hurricane Barrel looking? I've seen a lot of social media posts. Exactly. It's very unusual to have a storm of this strength this early in the season. So it's already a history making storm. It's still category four in the Caribbean Sea, but headed toward the Gulf of Mexico. We'll get to that here momentarily. Once again, temperature is 77 degrees in uh, Victoria itself. And pretty uniform everywhere you go along the coast is in the 80s, as usual. 70s from Victoria northward, up toward Nixon, Gonzales, and Wharton Ocampo as well. But the main story is going to be the hot temperatures again today. That's our weather story for the time being. Starting off in the 70s and 80s by 8 o'clock easily. 90 by noontime. I mean 90s by 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Add that humidity factor in. Going to be another scorcher in the area today. By the time we get to 9 o'clock, we're feeling like the low 90s. 105 or so by the uh, 11 a.m. hour here in Victoria. Pretty uniform everywhere else you go. So no matter what you do, you can't escape the heat unless you go inside air conditioning, that is. And by the time it gets 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 108 feel like temperature in Victoria. So we're sweating it out here and uh, ready for some rainfall, which will be on its way. Clouds and radar composite. Well, nothing showing up around here, keeping it on the quiet side. Be another hazy appearance to the sky. Some of the Saharan dust still lingering in the southern Texas region. And a few clouds as well, kind of hit and miss. But the main story is going to be barrel making its way into the Gulf of Mexico coming up by the weekend. Getting closer to us. Not as a major hurricane, not even a hurricane more than likely. Just a remnant low or a tropical storm at best, but it will be a rain producer for us. How much can we expect? Well, I got that for you a little bit later on this half hour. In the meantime, try your best to stay cool. Make sure everyone is cool and safe. Carolina. Thank you, Trey. Hurricane Barrel is causing significant damage as it rips through the Caribbean as a Category 5 storm. Barrel brought its powerful winds and storm surge to the island of Barbados Monday. The hurricane blew past trees, raised water levels, and made for dangerous surf. Barrel is the first hurricane classified as a Category 4 or higher to appear in June and the earliest Category 4 storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. Forecasters are warning it could remain as a tropical storm as it moves toward Mexico. The Supreme Court will weigh in on the FDA's refusal to approve flavored vapes. The agency has consistently declined to approve the flavored e-cigarettes, saying they pose a health risk and encourage young people to use tobacco. But manufacturers argue their products can be used to help people stop smoking. Supreme Court justices will hear oral arguments and decide the case in the next term. A new legal showdown over returning to the office. Four years after the pandemic, it's clear many workers across the country are not ready to return to the office full time. Living in a new day and age right now. Ahead of this long holiday weekend, remote workers are fighting back, opposing new mandates that could soon force them to return to the office. The latest to fight back, 6,000 city employees in Philadelphia. Their union now suing the mayor who wants them back in person full time July 15th. The lawsuit claims the mandate violates their contract and will make post pandemic staffing shortages even worse. Having that type of work flexibility allows folks to be able to be successful at work and be successful at home. The mayor is trying to entice the workers with more generous parental leave and other benefits, insisting that in-person workers will create a more visible and accessible government, 
But when it comes to today's workforce, new research shows employers looking to fill all those cubicles again have a challenging argument to make. I just don't think that forcing people back into the office has worked. The study showed that it doesn't improve collaboration or creativity. And a recent study found hybrid workers, those splitting their time between home and the office, are happier. 79% say they feel less drained, 78% feel less stressed, and 72% are less anxious. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Of course, working remotely is easier in certain industries than others. A court hearing is planned next week on that lawsuit in Philadelphia. And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code right there on your screen to take part. It looks like y'all are waking up. Some of these have changed. We ask you, have you ever worked remotely? Okay, let's take a look. 26% of you say yes, you have, and 74% of you say no, you have not. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is scheduled to address Congress on July 24th. President Joe Biden is expected to meet with Netanyahu during his visit. The source said U.S. and Israeli officials are still in the process of finalizing details, but the meeting would likely take place at the White House. Tensions between Biden and Netanyahu have escalated in recent months. The U.S. has grown increasingly frustrated with the way Israel has executed the war with Hamas including the lack of protections for civilians. Former President Donald Trump's sentencing date is postponed. A judge delayed the sentencing for Trump in his criminal hush money case. In May, a jury found the former president guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records in a case centered around a hush money payment. Trump's defense team sought to challenge the guilty verdict after the Supreme Court ruled that the ex-presidents are entitled to presumptive presumptive immunity for all official acts they performed in office. The criminal sentencing is now scheduled to take place on September 18th. The South Texas heat is a challenge for everyone, especially those who cannot easily escape the hot temperatures. Kim Pickens is the founder of the Humility Project. She says due to a lack of designated cooling areas in Victoria, the homeless can go to the library, Christ Kitchen, or area stores to escape the heat, but they can only stay for a short period of time before they're forced out. This cycle can eventually lead to a dangerous situation. Pickens also attended a city council meeting Tuesday vouching for the homeless population in Victoria. Um, I'd like to see the city sit down with us um, as a coalition of organizations that are doing the work out here in the community and, and really come up with honest solutions to issues that we have here. So that way we can work to make people's lives better. A homeless person, feel free to give them a water bottle, a handheld mist fan, or even a cold cloth so they can wipe sweat away. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Let's take a look at our clock. Let's see. It's uh, 637 on our Wednesday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. A local college is offering lessons on how to fly. How can one qualify? We have that coming up. Four months to go in the race of the White House, and this morning questions are mounting against both candidates. I'm Christian Cordero with the latest from Washington. And we're seeing Barrow currently in the Caribbean Sea make its way toward us. Not anything like it is right now, but it'd be a rainmaker for us nonetheless. We'll talk about that coming up in your forecast.
Okay, let's take a look at Barrow. It's still a hurricane, Category 4 in the Caribbean Sea, just south of Hispaniola, which is right here. Jamaica is up next, and you're going to get slammed by this strong hurricane. But it's beginning a weakening trend as it heads toward the northwestern Caribbean Sea, across the Yucatan, and into the Gulf of Mexico coming up by the weekend. Saturday morning, it's in the Gulf. May reach Category 1 status before it makes its way into Brownsville area, or probably south of there. But of course, it's, we're on the right-hand side of this, so a lot of more should be uh, drawn up uh, around the low pressure area and giving us a good rainfall chances for us coming up by the first part of next week. In the meantime, chances are pretty low, and the amount's pretty low in, in regards to that. But it makes its way through. Let's get me out of the way here. Coming up, this is about Monday. Look at the rainfall coming in off the Gulf of Mexico, really piling up. It could have anywhere from several inches of rain coming up for the next day or two coming up Monday into Tuesday, I should say, before it begins to move on out. So a good soaking rain is headed our way. Will not be a hurricane, not anything of that nature, so we're thankful for that. A rainmaker, that's definitely a plus for us. and definitely looks like it's going to be in the cards for us as well. Full forecast comes up a little bit later on before we go this half hour. Here you go with your sports. Here's Zach. Well, the Houston Astros trying to keep clawing away at the division. They are the hottest team in baseball. And yesterday afternoon, the former Victoria General Spencer Arigetti on the mound. They were already trailing two to nothing when former Astro George Springer with a three-run bomb bust this one open. It's five nothing Toronto in the third. But the Astros not going away after trailing seven to nothing. They scratch a few runs across and Jordan Alvarez with a big blast, three-run homer of his own, and suddenly the Astros down 7-5, to five, but the big seven-run deficit, just too much. They got the tying runner in scoring position, but just could not scratch it across. Houston falls 7-6, to six. rubber match later this afternoon as they try and take the series. With your 25 Sports Now, I'm Zach Brown. Thank you, Zach. All right, we want to invite y'all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. With the presidential election just months away, President Joe Biden is expected to meet with Democratic governors today, hoping to regain ground after last week's debate. While Trump now focuses on his campaign as several of his legal challenges face delays. Today, President Joe Biden is set to meet with Democratic governors, rallying support after a week of setbacks. At a private fundraiser Tuesday, Biden again apologized for his debate performance, saying, I wasn't very smart, adding he was in at least 15 time zones before the debate and that, quote, I didn't listen to my staff, joking that he almost fell asleep on stage. Biden returned to the U.S. 12 days before his showdown with former President Trump. During the debate, Trump spewed an arsenal of lies, including that everyone wanted Roe versus Wade overturned. But much of the fallout since has called Biden's fitness into question, including from within the Democratic Party. I think it's a legitimate question to say, is this an episode or is this a, a condition? The White House is pushing back. What I can tell you is that um, he had a cold and a bad night. Uh, I would not see this as an episode. And a new poll released by CNN shows Vice President Kamala Harris performing better against Trump than Biden. She is in the majority of Democratic leaders doubling down support. Look, Joe Biden is our nominee. We beat Trump once and we're going to beat him again. Trump was set to be sentenced this month following his conviction on 34 felony counts in his hush money trial. But the judge now pushing sentencing back to September after the Supreme Court's landmark decision granting Trump broad immunity for official acts. A president has to have immunity. Judge Juan Mershon says he'll consider what, if any, impact the ruling has on the case. The growing pressure on President Biden in the almost week since the debate has turned his re-election campaign into a message of reassurance. Meetings with governors, congressional leaders, more press availability, including the first post-debate sit-down interview with ABC News on Friday, are all part of Biden's response. Christiane Cordero, ABC News, Washington. Victoria College is offering area high school students the opportunity to learn how to fly a drone. This one-week academy is 
scheduled for July 22nd through the 26th and is open to students entering grades 9 through 12. Applicants must have a recent report card reflecting A's, B's, or higher in math and science. There is no cost for accepted students thanks to a Governor Summer Merit Program grant awarded to Victoria College by the Texas Workforce Commission that you can do um, flying drones um, and we also will help them register their own drones because that is uh, you know a requirement for any any drone that weighs uh, more than 0.55 pounds we need to register with the FAA so uh, we can help them do that. Applications are accepted through Wednesday July 17th for more details visit our website crossroadstoday.com. And the time is now 6.45 on our Wednesday morning, still to come. We go on what is considered one of the most beautiful drives in the world. Okay, it's time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Stella. Happy third birthday to our beautiful granddaughter, Stella Rose Arumbula. Love you lots, Nanny and Grandpa Amaro. And happy birthday to Criminal Minds actor, Thomas Gibson. The actor turns 62 today. And happy birthday, Maverick actor and producer Tom Cruise. He's 62 today. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now, come to crossroadstoday.com. Click on more on, and under home, you'll see the KVU Submit Your Birthday. All right, the time is now 6.45 on our Wednesday morning. Happy birthday if you're celebrating one today. For sure, and we'll, we'll be right back. Good morning, good morning. A lot going on with our weather here, especially today and the next few days. High pressure to our east 
was ridging in through Texas, but beginning to break down a little bit on his western edge, allowing a uh, barrel when he gets to the Gulf of Mexico coming up this weekend to move a little bit further to the north. That's why the, we're um, going to be on the uh, rainy side of the system. Will not be anything like it is right now. Will not be a category four hurricane. More, more than likely will not be a hurricane at all. It's a remnant low or a tropical storm or depression at best. So don't worry about that, but we will get some rainfall out of it. I'm pretty confident in, in saying that. And hazy conditions throughout the day from clouds here, here and there from time to time, keeping the rainfall away for the moment. Quero, sunny skies throughout the day. High temperature is in the mid 90s with triple digit heat index of value. Overnight lows will be in the 70s again. And also for Port Nevada, highs today 93 degrees. The part of the cloudy skies, hot temperatures, triple digit heat, heat index value no matter where you go without the crossroads, be careful out there. And Victoria, about 94, 95 degrees at 3 o'clock will be the daytime air temperature high for us. And extended forecast for us, keeping it hazy today. And pretty much the same for tomorrow, which is Independence Day, by the way. And then looking like we'll have increasing rain chances. Rain likely, more than likely, coming up for Monday and Tuesday as the barrel gets closer to us and moves into South Texas, more than likely. They give us rain chances by then. We do need some rainfall, of course, but um, there could be some possibilities of flooding, so we're watching weather developments as we get closer to that time. In the meantime, try your best to stay cool. Remember, the heat index value is about 100 degrees a day in all locations. Drink, drink plenty of water, find some shade, and take it easy out there. 25 News Now anchor Don Brubaker is touring Ireland with holiday vacations. Here's what he's up to this week. And here we are with the Hallow Pascas. Here is Joseph. Linda, tell us about how y'all feel about all the experiences the last several days. It's just been unbelievable. It, was, it is a breathtaking, beautiful scenery, and especially today, just absolutely gorgeous. The countryside was really, really spectacular. From Ireland, I'm Don Brubaker, KABU-TV 25 News Now. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is banning a potentially harmful additive found mainly in sodas and some other food products. It's called brominated vegetable oil, or BVO. The FDA says the additive keeps citrus flavoring from floating to the top of beverages. Environmental Working Group, a nonprofit, says BVO can accumulate in the body and cause health issues, including headaches, skin problems, and loss of muscle coordination. The ban is set to take effect on August 2nd. And if you're planning to hit the roads this 4th of July holiday, gas prices will be one thing worth celebrating. AAA and Gas Buddy say the average cost for a regular gallon of gas Tuesday sat at $3.50. That price is expected to drop by one cent Thursday, which would make the price at the pump the cheapest it's been on Independence Day in three years. In 2022, gas prices were at the highest at $4.79. More than 60 million people are expected to drive to their destinations this year. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. Groups jump into action to help gather aid for areas hit by what is now being called a, called a historic tropical cyclone.
Hurricane Barrel has left some of the Caribbean devastated. Small islands like Grenada and Barbados have several destroyed homes and others with no power. In South Florida on Tuesday, groups jumped into action to gather funds and much needed supplies. They started packing up boxes with food, water, wipes, tarps, and generators. World Central Kitchen has also begun delivering food and water to the Union Islands. The strong Category 4 hurricane is on a path toward Jamaica and the Cayman Islands where it's forecasted to hit today. Thousands are evacuating from their homes as a fire continues to rage in Butte County, California. The fast-moving fire has burned dozens of homes and 13,000 residents in the area were ordered to evacuate on Tuesday. So far, the fire has scorched more than 12,000 acres. As of 10 p.m. Tuesday night, the fire has still not been contained, with more than 500 firefighters battling the blaze. Helicopter crews help battle the fire using water from a reservoir. Evacuation shelters have been opened to help those displaced by the fire. Google's annual environmental report on Tuesday said Google's greenhouse gas emissions have soared almost five soared almost 50 percent in five years. The spike is due to the expansion of its data centers that underpin artificial intelligence systems, but it leaves Google's target of getting to net zero emissions by 2030 in jeopardy. Google leaders say the company remains committed to the goal, but stresses the target is extremely ambitious. Leonard Peltier, the indigenous activist convicted of the 1975 murders of two FBI agents, has been denied parole from federal prison. Peltier's legal team says they plan to appeal the parole board's decision. They plan to appeal the parole board's decision. The 79-year-old has long maintained his innocence in the shooting deaths. The agents were killed in a shootout while searching for a robbery suspect on the Pine Ridge Reservation. In 1977, a jury found Peltier guilty of first-degree murder. He's serving two consecutive life terms. Northwestern University's law school has been hit with a lawsuit challenging affirmative action. The complaint filed Tuesday by a group called Faculty, Alumni and Students Opposed to Racial Preferences alleges that the private university's Pritzker, Pritzker School of Law in Chicago discriminates against white men in faculty hiring. The lawsuit also claims that of 21 faculty positions made in the last three years, only three went to white men. It claims that the law school is in violation of federal anti-discrimination laws by hiring less qualified people of color and women. Climate scientists say that extreme rain and drought are likely to become more common and that Texas will likely see a growing gap between wet parts of the state and dry parts as climate change alters participation patterns and warms oceans. You can read the story by the Texas Tribune on our website, crosswordstoday.com. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crosswords Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. You just have to search for Crosswords Today Plus. And I do want to remind you all about our first Warren Storm Team Hurricane Tracker. You can find it at your local stores. Let's go ahead and go to Trey for a further look at our forecast. Exactly. Thank you so much, Carolina. Looking like we'll have some hazy conditions in the area today. A few clouds from time to time, holding off on the rain for the moment. it will be coming in in a pretty big way coming up with the weekend in the next week, courtesy of Barrel. Today, though, sunny skies, high temperatures in the mid-90s with some new winds. And then we'll look at high temperatures in Port Lavaca in the mid-90s or so with a triple digit heat index value by then. And also coming up in Victoria, about the same, 94 degrees by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Be careful out there. Very hot again today. An extended forecast for us. Look at the rain chances coming in, especially for Monday and Tuesday as barrel gets closer to us. Will not be a hurricane more than likely. This will be a remnant lower tropical storm, but it promises to bring some good rainfall areas to our South Texas region, so we're, we're appreciative about that. In the meantime, try your best to stay cool and make it a great day. Carolina? All right, Trey. Wow. Looks like we're going to have a hot couple of days, but maybe some rain. That barrel will barrel toward us. <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah. So we'll have some barrels of rainfall headed our way. <laughs> well, hopefully hopefully everyone is able to stay safe, fed. Exactly. Have some clean access, some access to clean water out there. As That's we get the main through thing. This hurricane.